This is just a quick video to talk about the group of quaternions. So the notation we'll use for the group is Q with the subscript of 8. The 8 denotes the number of elements. We have 8 elements and this group again is called the quaternions. So how do you multiply uh, the elements of this group? Well we use uh, a little diagram. So I'm going to put an I here and J here and a K here. And we'll draw arrows, an arrow going from I to J, an arrow going from J to K, and an arrow going from K to I. And using this diagram, we can actually uh, define the multiplication. So for example, I times J, well, if you follow the arrow, I times J, we'll say that's equal to the other one, so K. And then likewise, J times K, so J, K, just follow the arrows, that should give us I. And one more, if you do ki, so ki, if you follow the arrows, that should give us j. Now the interesting thing is if you go backwards, say you go from j to i, so ji, that should give you the opposite of k or negative k. And if you do ik, we'll get the opposite of j, so ik will be negative j. And lastly, if we do kj, we should get the opposite of i, so negative i. So right away you see that this group is non-abelian. We have ij equal to k, and yet ji is equal to negative k. So this is a non-abelian group of order 8, because it has 8 elements. Okay, it's a non-abelian group. Multiplication by 1 and negative 1 uh, is defined in the obvious way. So for example, 1 times i is equal to i. Um, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. W 1 squared is 1, and then negative 1 squared is also 1. So in this group, it turns out that the identity element is 1. So 1, this is the identity element. The multiplication is associative. Uh, it's rather tedious to check, so we won't check. What about inverses? Well, let's talk about that. So inverses. So 1 is its own inverse. So 1 is its own inverse. And that should make sense because we're saying it's the identity element. Uh, negative 1 is also its own inverse. So it's an element of order 2 uh, in this group. i is the inverse of negative i. And we can check this quickly if you do i times negative i. This is the same thing as saying negative 1 times i squared. This is negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. And then likewise, j is the inverse of negative j. I'm using little dashes to avoid writing. And k is the inverse of negative k. Okay, so we do have a group. It's called the quaternions. Let's go ahead and look at a quick uh, subgroup lattice and talk about all of the subgroups of the quaternions. That's actually what makes it uh, quite interesting. So this is Q8. Okay, and again, this is the set with 1, negative 1, I, negative I, J, negative J, and then K, and negative K. And let's draw a little arrow here. So one of the subgroups is the subgroup containing 1, negative 1, i, and negative i. Another subgroup is very similar. It has 1 and negative 1, but this time it'll have j and negative j. And another subgroup would be the one containing 1, negative 1, and k and negative k. So these are subgroups of order 4. So it has three subgroups with four elements. That's called the order, the number of elements. And then all of these have a subgroup, which is just the subgroup containing 1 and negative 1. And then here we just have the subgroup containing 1, which is the identity. This is actually the center of the quaternions. So this is the set of all elements that commute with everything in Q8. Um, and the interesting thing here, again, Q8, Q8 is non-abelian. Okay? But it turns out that all of its subgroups are normal subgroups. Uh, I think the easiest way to see that is to do the following. So let's call this i, big I, and let's call this, uh, say, big J, just making up the notation, and let's call this big K. And let's look at 
uh, the order of the quotient group, in other words, uh, the index. So if you look at the index of, Q, of, Q, of I and Q8, this is the number of cosets. So this is the order of Q8 divided by the order of I. And this is equal to 2. So whenever this is 2, a very common result in algebra says that I is normal in Q8. So I is normal in Q8. Likewise, you see that 8 divided by 4 is 2. Right? Basically what we did, right? This is 8 and this is 4. Skip the step there. So likewise, K and J are normal in Q8. So we've established that i, j, and k are normal. What about this guy here? What about the center? Well, the center is always a normal subgroup. So in fact, we do have a group where every subgroup is normal. And obviously, this is normal as well. So the key facts, I guess, to take away from this video is that uh, it's non-abelian. And it's order 8. OK. Uh, every subgroup is normal. So every subgroup is normal. So every single one uh, is normal. Q8, or the quaternions, is often used as a counterexample uh, whenever you're asked to come up with examples of something that you know satisfies or doesn't satisfy something. Also, just there's five groups, five groups of order 8. I don't want to derail from the video, but let's quickly talk about them. So we've established one that's Q8, and it's non-abelian. Okay, that's one of the uh, groups of order 8. The other group of order 8 is the symmetries of a square. So this is the dihedral group uh, containing 8 elements. Okay, So both of these guys are non-abelian, and they're order 8. And then we have three more subgroups of order 8. We have the cyclic group, so I'll just use Z8 for that. Okay, Then we have the direct product of Z4 with Z2. And lastly, we have the direct product of Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2. So all of these guys here, these are the abelian groups of order 8. So I hope that made sense, and uh, hopefully this picture gives you an idea of what Q8 is. And in case you're ever doing a problem where you need to think of uh, like a counterexample, it's just a good group uh, to keep in mind. I hope that made sense.